Hey, everybody. It's the Jimmy Dore Show. I'm Aaron Maté sitting in for Jimmy here with Americans comedian Kurt Metzger. And let's talk about Ukraine. Here's a recent headline from Reuters. Putin says Russia may have to make Ukraine deal one day, but partners cheated in the past. Russian President Vladimir Putin said Russia would likely have to reach agreements regarding Ukraine in the future, but felt betrayed by the breakdown of the Minsk agreements. And what I the Minsk explained that we were just stalling for time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we're going to hear that. Uh, Putin said Germany and France, which brokered ceasefire agreements in the Belarusian capital Minsk between Ukraine and Russian backed separatists in eastern Ukraine in 2014 and 2015, had betrayed Russia. And we're now pumping Ukraine with weapons. And what Putin's talking about is, in 2014, you had a U.S.-backed coup in Ukraine. Covered that a lot here on the Jimmy Dore Show. And after that, ethnic Russians of Ukraine, who felt betrayed and felt as if their government had been overthrown in a U.S.-backed coup, they rebelled. And they rebelled because the new coup government included some fascists who wanted to basically ban Russian culture and wipe it out of Ukraine. So a war broke out. And Russia backed the rebels. And the U.S. backed the new Ukrainian government. And in 2015, something called the Minsk Accords was reached to end that war, but it didn't stop the war ultimately. And the basic bargain of the war of the Minsk Accords was that Ukraine was going to recognize the rights of these ethnic Russians inside Ukraine and the Donbass. And in return, uh, Donbass would be demilitarized and the war would stop and Donbass would get some limited autonomy, but stay inside of Ukraine. That was the premise of the Minsk Accords. Uh, but now Putin uh, is pointing to this. In an interview published in Germany's Zeit magazine, former German Chancellor Angela Merkel said that the Minsk agreements had been an attempt to give Ukraine time to build up its defenses. So Angela Merkel, who helped broker Minsk, is not saying that Minsk was meant to end the war. She's saying that it was meant to give Ukraine time to build its defenses. And here's more of what Angela Merkel said. The 2014 Minsk agreement was an attempt to give Ukraine time. It also used this time to get stronger, as you can see today. The Ukraine of 2014-15 is not the Ukraine of today. In early 2015, Putin could easily have overrun them at the time. And I very much doubt that the NATO countries could have done as much then as they do now to help Ukraine. So that's Angela Merkel, who helped broker this peace deal to end the war in the Donbass uh, that began after a U.S. backed coup in 2014, saying that this peace deal was not meant to bring peace. It was meant to give Ukraine time to prepare for the war that we're in right now. And Merkel was backed up by French president, the former French president, Hollande, who said the same thing. He says that he was asked, do you also believe that the negotiations in Minsk were intended to delay Russian advances in Ukraine? And Hollande said, Francois Hollande said, yes, Angela Merkel is right on this point. So another person to make the same point is the Ukrainian president who signed Minsk. His name is Petro Poroshenko. And he also said that Minsk was not intended to make peace. It was intended to delay the war, to give Ukraine time to build up the war, to fight the rebels that Russia was backing and Russia itself. This is what Poroshenko said. How did the negotiations in Minsk end? We achieved what we wanted. We didn't trust Putin then, and we don't now. Our task was to avert the threat or to delay the war. It was necessary to get eight years for us to restore economic growth and build up a powerful military. This was the first task. And it- so you hear this? He says Minsk was necessary for us because it gave us eight years to build up a powerful military. Not to make peace, not to end the war, but to build up a military for an even bigger war with Russia. If they wanted the delay, then why keep bombing Don, the Donbas the whole time? Because they and violating it well, yourself they want, and not letting Putin violate it. They wanted to keep the war going, but to keep the war going to their publics and to get more <clears throat> weapons in, they had to pretend as if they were serious about peace. Oh. So we're going to sign this peace deal. We're going to mm. say we're committed to a peace process, but really we're preparing for more war and we're keeping the war going. Was achieved. What is the uh, result of the Minsk Agreement? We win eight years to create the army. We win eight years to restore economy. <laughs> there we go. He says <laughs> so it. You can't trust Russia. You know who else you can't trust? <laughs> Good Russia, I guess you call it. <laughs> well, look, so this is back at the signing of Minsk. And so here you have the president of Belarus, then you have Putin, then you have Merkel, then you have Hollande of France. And you have Poroshenko, the Ukrainian president who we just heard from. And basically all their admissions mean that these three right here have all admitted that they were lying, that they were stall- they were using this peace deal to stall for time. 
So these three people right here have all admitted that this peace agreement, this peace ceremony was a fraud. It was a scam just to buy for more time to delay the war. And Max Blumenthal points this out. He says, Merkel reveals the Minsk agreement was a stalling tactic that allowed the West to militarize Ukraine as an anti-Russian proxy and fortify it for an inevitable war. I'm struggling to find any coverage or analysis of this remarkable confession in English, in English language mainstream media. And he's right. Merkel's admission has never been reported because it goes against the narrative that Russia's war was unprovoked and that Ukraine just wanted to live in peace and Russia came in to conquer it. No. If I wanted to be like stupid about it, yeah. right? I would go, well, but you know, you can't trust Putin because he's a liar. So they just have to, of course they wanted to have uh, peace, but they knew ahead of time Putin was already bad faith. So it's okay that they were doing that. Right. Of course. Yes. They're not, they're, they would make it like, it's because of Putin. It's not because we didn't want to start. We just knew he was going to attack no matter what. That's right. But, and if you, if that's how you see the world, then you never can get anything done. You're always going to be at war with Russia. Well, it's you'll odd never... though that you're saying that about Putin and I haven't heard him break any agreement. I hear you break in exactly. your agreements. Yeah. Yeah. And let's recall. So this war began back in 2014 and it meant for the people in the Donbass, the people who were fighting this new U.S.-backed coup government, that they were being bombed regularly uh, by the Ukrainian government. And there was a time when actually outlets like CNN reported honestly about this. You would never see this now. So now in this current war, we don't see coverage in the U.S. pretty much ever of how the people of the Donbass are being bombed with our weapons and suffering a lot. But this began a long time ago, back in 2014. So this is a look from back in 2014 how cnn used to cover this war in the donbass and it's very different to how cnn would cover it now petro poroshenko will have a hard time winning back hearts and minds in this city as the people of donetsk sweep up the debris of their homes and livelihoods they are hardened against a president they say is killing his own people. We are Ukrainian, but they kill us, this man says. So we probably need our own country, because these people in Kiev, they are not brothers for us. The shells hit these homes days ago, but the tears are still fresh. We live on the ground. It was so hard for two weeks, especially for 27, 28, 29th. But only today it's quiet. Sorry, sorry, I need to go. Two people were killed outside this block of flats last Wednesday. One of them was a 50-year-old woman, the other a 34-year-old woman. Her husband, who won't talk to us, he says he's in shock, managed to make it down to the cellar with their little child, but she just didn't have the time. And this is a story that repeats itself over and over in dozens of apartment blocks with civilians being killed by the constant shelling around Donetsk. The city's trauma hospital is filled with the civilian wounded, shrapnel embedded in the flesh and bone of market sellers' legs, the broken limbs of pensioners far too old to run. There was one war, and this is the second war, this old lady tells me. I was born in 1940 in World War II, and I will probably die before this war is over. Valentina Popova in the next door ward lost her leg and her arm to indiscriminate artillery shells. Switching to the Ukrainian language, she makes a heartrending plea to the president. We used to dance, sing, do everything in Ukrainian, she says. Poroshenko, Mr. Poroshenko, please listen to us. Why don't you understand your people? Be a man, be human. Please stop your aggression. Stop this war. But there is little sign of that. This once thriving city is now half empty, its railway station bombed. The forces unleashed by this conflict, greater perhaps than Mr. Poroshenko can control. And so now we know what happened. When they signed the Minsk Accords, rather than use those accords as a basis to end that war and stop bombing these people, they used it as a smokescreen to continue the war for another eight years, which then led to Russia's invasion. And that's the kind of reporting that doesn't isn't done anymore in U.S. media because it's too inconvenient to the narrative of this proxy war. Was Poroshenko, um, did he like, was it like the thing where Zelensky, we had that guy Lev uh, Galinkman? Yeah. Galinkin? yeah, Lev Galinkin, yeah. He was talking about how 
uh, if Zelensky had tried, try, he one time tweeted something and that he yeah. got muscled by Nazis to take it down. Was Poroshenko in the same shape or was he on board with doing that? So just like Zelensky, Poroshenko was definitely intimidated by the far right of Ukraine who did not want to make peace at all. And they played a very instrumental role in threatening the Ukrainian government with even a coup if they made peace with the rebels in the East. So that was a factor. But Poroshenko, after he left office and after Zelensky came in vowing to make peace, Poroshenko started campaigning against the Minsk Accords, the very accords that he had signed. And so whether Poroshenko was conniving all along or whether he was intimidated or whether it was both, the point is, even when the Ukrainian government has said it wants to make peace, even the the, the president who signed that deal got enlisted in campaigning against it. And it's meant that we've had the suffering going on for eight years, and it led directly to the war that's gotten even worse today. Everybody, we're doing live stand-up comedy in Los Angeles in January and February in Los Angeles. And then we're going to Tempe, Palm Springs, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, Nashville. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all those tickets and become a premium member while you're there.